everyone, and welcome to Mama Dragons TCG. And Konami dropped us a wonderful early Christmas present right before Thanksgiving gift, whatever you want to call it, a new ban list. Now, whether or not it's an emergency ban list is up really for debate. Um, there's a good reason about that to what exactly got limited, banned, unbanned, and semi-limited. And we'll discuss that. Now, I fully have seen this list. I know what cards are on here, and I have thoughts on them all. But let's jump into it. All right, so let's check out the bands itself. Now, prematurely, what am I looking for for this ban list? Tiers. Tiers right now are tier zero in the competitive meta scene. Now, everyone can talk about how many tier zero formats we've had. I've only probably been through a couple. I think Pepe was one of them, and I think Zoo might have been a tier zero. Zero, I think it may have been just tier one, but I think Pepe, I know for a fact, was tier uh, tier zero when early age of uh, Link Monsters, when we got more and more evolution of, no, early age of, apologies, of Pendulum Monsters, but I did play through a couple of really big uh, Link formats like um, Goki. I wouldn't call Goki tier zero, but Goki was like high tier one. But right now we are kind of in a tier zero meta with tier limits. So I'm looking for tier limits to get hit Maybe see a lot of the main monsters go to one. And I know I'm not going to see any Ishiju cards. The new Magnificent Mavens has only been out a few weeks now, I think. So they're not going to hit that set by any means. They're going to try to sell it, sell you those cards, which means there's a good chance they won't hit any tiers. Konami is a business after all. And money, money, money is what they're after. And if the tiers, you know, don't get hit on a list with more support coming out in, I think, February when another major set drops in the TCG. Yeah, they're not going to hit it. It's This is a golden goose that they could sell. And yes, I know a lot of people love uh, this tier zero format in the competitive scene, not so much in the casual scene. But I think Konami sometimes where the money is is where the money goes. So if competitive players are loving the format and they're buying up the stuff and it pushes more people to buy up the stuff, then yeah, the, there's a good chance casual players are just going to have to go through it. But we'll have to see. So anyways, first off, there's absolutely no new monsters on here. Maxi, so where I think it come back to one, but maybe that's just my personal opinions, but it's still right here. Our first hit, though, is Curious the Light Swarm Dominion. If you've never seen what Curious does, um, it's a mill three engine. It can bring a car back. It can do Nightmare Cerberus Mon loops. Nightmare Cerberus, not Nightmare Cerberus Mon. Apologies. I've got Digimon apparently on the brain. But no, uh, you could use uh, Nightmare Cerberus with comboing it. It's got a mill engine, which tier limits could use. Truth be told, um, they don't use it now. By no means is this added to their deck main, uh, to their extra deck. But it could in the future, especially with February, with a whole new slew of support cards coming in for tier limits. So this could be easily could have been just a ticket time bomb, which February, this card comes out, explodes, and suddenly tier limits is way more powerful than it is. So... It's a hit that I think stopped the ticking time bomb of tier limits and maybe making tier limits the true tier zero, tier zero. Anyways, that's pretty much it. It's impressive just how many Link monsters we now have on this list. It's just impressive. Now, all of them, all of them deserve it. Like Mr. Candaconda right there, Mr. Snake, he deserves it. And of course, uh, there's no new synchros, no new XYZs, but there is one card here, folks. Rejoice, rejoice. I can hear the angels. I can hear the angels right now. There it is, Mystic Mine. Woo! -hoo! It's finally gone. Casual players can fully weep and they can complain about it in my comment section down below. But yes, Mystic Mine is officially gone. There were jokes about Mystic Mind being much like Max C to the OCG where it's never going to get a hit. But there are reasons for it, and I think why it got the hit was for reasons for it got unlimited. But truth be told, it's always been a bad card. Always been a card that doesn't facilitate to how Yu-Gi-Oh! needs to be played. But really enough, I think this hit would have been more... Important last ban list, not this ban list. Now with uh, Ishizu tier being the top zero, everyone's boarding into ways to remove Mystic Mine off the field. Um, and it's really only coming from like sideboards now. So with so many decks now main decking it, it doesn't main decking out or siding in outs, or now this is just being a side in card to deal with tier matchups. It doesn't really see the major play that it is, well, before. 
I still think it's a very strong hit. I think it's a very unfair card. A uh, very not good for the game state. Again, all the casual players who love it, go down to comments and type your type your angry comments down below. I'll make sure I read them. But yes, I think nowadays I am a little more hesitant to say it needs to be banned. I would have said one of probably would have been the best thing because still tier limit uh, Ishizu tiers is tier zero, and a lot of casual players can use Mystic Mine to deal with that deck. Now, sure, we there's some other new cards to deal with it, and maybe this will have us do deck strategies to, you know, contend with playing around Miss, not have Mystic Might and still playing around Ishizu Tears, but I'm glad it's gone. A really unfair card, but there were a lot of very interesting decks that played it. I'm sad to see them gone. Not really. Not really. I quite enjoy that card. It's finally banned. But anyways, that is it for all of the bans. So we did not see any Tirlement stuff getting banned. We didn't get to see any Shizu stuff getting banned. It's not really going to matter. There's so only really two cards got banned. Um, Really, I think, like like I said, the only main major deck that's been playing around. Now, I know people want Barrier Statue banned, but I think Barrier Statue right now is keeping Flu like at its top level. Because there are still a couple Flu decks still winning it, still getting the top tables. Now, the winning deck is Ishizu Tears. But there's those flow wonderies around. And I know people want the bear statue gone, but personally, I don't want the bear statue. I think it's a great it's a it's an annoying floodgate nonetheless, but it's a floodgate nonetheless that can still be outed. There there's a ways out out it. Alright, so uh nothing uh else coming off the list or anything like that. Let us go to semi limits. This is where we're looking for the tier monsters. Well, we do have a new semi-linear, Herald of Orange Light. It, it's kind of interesting. The only two decks I know that really play this card. Drytron and um, Tears. Tears, she's used, I think a lot of them are fairy-based, so you can pitch them off the Herald of Orange Light to uh, stop interruption plays like your opponent's going to go dimensional shifter you go herald of orange light pitch when he won the shizu trigger the siege effects to start the mill engine of the tierlemans deck and milling your opponent as well if some of them i believe do i don't know if they all do but it kind of makes sense it's getting limited um they kind of want more interaction on the tier limit player. Sure, Dimensional Shifter is not anything a tier limit, Ishizu tier limit player is wanting to see because it automatically just puts a stop to their full combos instantaneously because, again, all their stuff needs to go to the graveyard. Dimensional Shifter says, yeah, all that's good to go to the Banish Zone. So it's very interesting that they want to hit Herald of Orange Light, but I think they want more interaction with uh, Ishizu tier than what Orange Light is allowing. I know there's probably going to be people that say, well, Orange Light's kind of dead if you don't have one of these Sizu cards. That's pretty true. Um, I think it had a higher ceiling of possibility of using it out of Drytron because Drytron play a lot more fairy types. But Drytron also is going to see a small hit of this. I don't think it's going to hurt too bad for Drytron. I feel like they're just going to do it as end combo to get their Herald of Orange Light to their hand to um, pitch off the uh, Herald of Ultimate in this. I mean, if they get in their hand to stop interruption as well, that's really great, but... I feel this is more of a hit to allow players to more interact with the one and only Tirlament cards and the Shizu cards. And we are approaching the T's now, and there are none of them. Yes, folks, Shizu Tirlaments is not seeing any hits. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna spoil it right now. There is no semi-limits to the Shizu tier deck. It is going to be tier zero, possibly through even February for tier zero. Unless, of course, another emergency ban list drops, which who knows? Konami is always dropping emergency ban lists when they think the format's too broken. Like I said, I think without a doubt, the tier zero format is loved by the competitive scene. Not so much loved by the casual scene. That's why I think with Mystic Mind going to zero, it hurts the casual scene more than it hurts the, the competitive scene. Because competitive players, you know, were already siding into outs for it like i said all the anti-meta decks that wanted to play mystic mind to deal with tears um uh, and all that yeah it, they're gonna it, they're gonna not like it but again i think mystic mind is well deserved to be on this list well deserved out of the format and i guess you, all the casual players are just gonna have to figure out other anti-meta decks that uh well work but yeah um so no tears but it makes sense with February coming around with a new set. Konami is a business about making money. So if they're not going to touch their golden goose anytime soon, if it means money, 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 that's why it's co money after all. Anyways, uh, there's nothing else really on the limited list, I believe. Uh, was there anything? No, 
There's no more on the unlimited on the limited list. Or Herald of Orange Life was the only thing unlimited. Limited, pause, not unlimited. Apology, a limited. It's still a little weird. I think they could have hit maybe one or two of the uh, tier limit cards, maybe just to uh, get the tier zero format, just not so much because especially with February with tier limits getting even more support that they can combo with to do even more crazy combos, to even be more of a tier zero deck. It, it's just fascinating with me. Fascinating. Now, good chance by February. Actually, let's see. When did they say the next ban list will be here? Uh, it goes to effect December 1st, by the way. So beginning of December and uh, next few months. So it could be February. Probably not. Tier Mint aren't going to see a hit in February either because, you know, their new wave of support is going to be out. So, yeah. Well, uh, start learning the tier zero formats, folks. All right. Unlimited. This card could have definitely just been to three. Lairlisk Recital Starling. If you didn't see in Bird Up was a time period when you could go the um, Sovereign. He's uh, up here in band. Let me get him. Do, 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 do. I always forget his name. Uh, let's see. Do, 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 do. Let's. <laughs> there he is. Smorg, uh, Bird of Sovereignty. So what you would do is you could go into Bird of Smorg. Sovereignty was which Bird Up was one of the major cards. You'd go into it. But what you would use was a two Sterling. Uh, these two ly uh, lyrical. Apologies. Whoops. Uh, Lyrilisk. Recital Sterlings was that you would make them both and then you go to UFD, uh, Utopic uh, Draco Future. You'd go into him. Now, the deck only really ever ran two because you'd only use two, and it was mostly burned up because you lose the Lyralisk with the Tri Brigade engine as well. So it's very interesting to see them now uh, back to the two. So now uh, S Sprite Tri Brigade can probably maybe use a UFD engine as well. A UDF, UDF engine, not a UFD, a uh, UDF engine. So it's very interesting. This card, though, could have come back to three, personally, because you only need two. They're not going to go into a third one, because only it's going to run one uh, F0, and then one UDF, and then two of these, and that's it. That's like the entirety of that engine, or that line play for XYZ. So this could easily have gone to three and done absolutely nothing, uh pot desires this needs to come back to three personally i don't know why it's still sitting here but semi limits always feel a little weird stuff that can might could be that three why we're we semi limiting it it could just easily come back to three just like this lyrilis recital starling yeah it went to one because of bird up that was the best deck when best deck for a while so anyways on limits well you let me try to slowly go down all right so i'm not exactly fully on the Teller Knight uh, Ptolemaeus thing. I've read what it does, where basically it can use two or more level, I believe level four monsters. You overlay them and then you remove three XYZ materials to then uh, rank it up one level. So it's a level, it's a rank four, so go up to rank five. So I've heard people go into um, Cyber Dragon Infinity. So it's interesting that it immediately jumps from Forbidden onto um, the Unforbidden list. So Basically, it's three copies all, but I'm pretty sure you only maybe need one. I don't know how many times. Sure, I think it's more or less, I think it got banned around the Pendulum era, um, just because Pendulum was able to spam level fours extremely easy, and then you can go up into Infinity by removing three sources. The remove the seven sources is never going to come up, hardly ever, and because most decks were running it for the rank up one, you'll never have the other two remove seven to skip your opponent's next turn and then add a Teller Knight to your hand. It never was useful. So it's just it's just very interesting to me that instead it went from zero to three instead of going normally to zero one and then they'll try it at one if they don't think and then they'll just sit it at one. If they think it can go to three, it automatically jumps to three. It's just very interesting because normally they like to limit stuff before they go to unlimits. Very, very interesting. I don't know how much of a splash is gonna make. Now I believe the tier limits are all level fours and just how much they can spam out their own dudes. Um there's a good chance they could go in to uh, uh, Telemus, the Teller Knight monster. I'm not going to try to pronounce the last name again. The Teller Knight monster and uh, use it to go into Infinity. I don't think they want to. I don't think Infinity is all that good in like current meta. It only really takes one monster and negates one effect. 
Um, that's all once per turn, by the way. Um, it's the gate is a once per turn, and it's take a monster and suck it up as a resource under it is only a once per turn. It's your turn. Is, it's only on your turn as well. So it's the negates a quick effect. The other one is just a normal effect. So it's going to be very interesting exactly how this uh, goes about if all the tier limit players uh, jump on this XYZ. And let's talk about the next one. It is Tenki. No, Dimensional Fissure. Sorry. Uh, we'll just talk about Tenki as well. Tenki, congratulations. All of our Tri Brigade and all our great uh, Zodiac players rejoice. You can have your car back at three. That It's a searcher card that can get hit by Ash. It's a continuous spell card that it can be hit by uh, anything that removes back row. Um, yeah. It's not amazing, and it only really buffs, I think, Beast Warrior, I think. Yeah, it only buffs Beast Warriors. But rejoice for all our Tri Brigade players and all our Zoo players. Dimensional Fissure, though, is very interesting. So, Dimensional Fissure and two other cards we'll see, I think, are paying, are being unlimited, because coming from the limited list to unlimited, by the banning of Mystic Mind. So if you've ever seen Dimensional Fissure, um, it ban banishes any monster sent from the field to the graveyard. I, Well, it does that. It banishes, which is really great. So it's back down to three. Um, a lot of... Do -do 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 flu decks were playing it um, to banish, because again, they banish all their stuff and get all their birds back by their bird, bird effects. So very interesting. But also what's interesting Flamma Jamma, Macro Cosmos, and Metaverse. These are the other two cards that, um, well, Metaverse mainly came off the list because of Mystic Mind's ban, because it's a normal trap card that can immediately set a field spell to your to your field. It's much like Demise of Land, but I think Demise of Land needs you to have your opponent to have a field spell or do something very specific. Metaverse is like, yeah, uh, standby phase, Metaverse. Or anytime Metaverse, I'm going to pray Mystic Mind. Now you can't respond to Mystic. Now you can't do anything. That was the reason why Metaverse went to one. Um, was to stop Mystic Mind. Now it's very interesting now with Metaverse at three. And a lot of tier Ishizu players out there. You can now go into, um, when they start their combos, flip Metaverse. Go into um, Necro Valley. And Necro Valley states that uh, monsters in the graveyard can't activate their effects. And they can't move either. So it pretty much just kills that deck instantaneously unless they remove the uh necro valley which is more capable because you know there are cards that can remove it unlike mystic mine monsters that can remove it unlike mystic mine where everything was just kind of turned off and then of course macrocosmos is the opposite of dimensional fissure it but it does the exact same thing of banishing what these two are saying is i think konami is saying here, I know we just removed Mystic Mind, but here's some good anti-meta cards that help you deal with this tier zero format. Look, you can banish all your opponent's stuff if you're playing a Shizu tier. And hey, look, we also didn't do anything to Dimensional Shifter, so you can still play that. So yeah, uh, Dimensional Fissure and Macrocosmos feel like Konami's way of saying, yes, we know there's a tier zero format. Here's some cards to help you with that. So it's very, very interesting. Now, I know for a fact what I'm probably going to do, it's going to make a lot of anti-meta decks li live and very good at what they're going to be able to do. Um, it's probably going to make me want to play Flu now even more uh, because, you know, Flu and Flu can play under these two cards perfectly. So it's basically pushing a lot of anti-meta towards Shizu tier. That's what it feels like. Konami's little way of saying... Yes, we know it's tier zero. Yes, we know we don't hit anything of importance on the tier zero format. You know, we hit the little bits and pieces, but we really don't hit the cards that make it tier zero. Like all the tiers and the Shizu stuff. But here's some good cards to help you deal with that uh, tier zero format. So yes. Overall, I quite enjoy it. I think I wish... I think and I wish tiers were in the limited area. I know they're not going to touch it. It's a business. They want to make their money. Right now, it's a golden goose. The competitive players love it. But sometimes I feel like catering to the competitive players really does hurt the majority of the Yu-Gi-Oh! fan base. And that's the casual player. I don't think there's a lot of competitive players. And I could be completely wrong with that. I feel like every tournament, there's a lot of competitive players. But if you take a look at like a tournament scene and you take a look at maybe a local scene, there's a difference between people who play at those scenes. 
And even if you look at the top 32 breakdowns of people who've been there and people who play. So, yes, it feels like this list alienates some of the... Um, I'm just going to sit right here and uh, highlight this for us all. But I feel like it alienates a lot of the casual player base because it really isn't hitting um, the one and only um, Tierlament, Ishizu Tierlament deck. Now, yes, it's going to be very interesting how um, some of those unlimits go into the game. I think Tri-Brigade Sprite's going to jump into a new format, especially now that they can go into UDF um, again. And not mention they have Tinky back at three. There's interesting ways of playing like a Zeus control deck I, that kind of came to my mind um, where you can play all the macros, the dimensional fissures, and then play um, the Zodiac normal engine and just play like a big Zeus control and just control the board and banish everything off your opponent's side of the field. Grimmaju can come back to be a little different. So it's going to be very interesting how and then flu can be flu. Fluanderies can be Fluanderies, even though I know people want Bear Statue got banned in uh, Master Duel, but I think... The Master Duel and uh, the real TCG are completely different. And of course, we still have Floodgates. Uh, we still got hundreds of trap card Floodgates to play. So it's going to be very interesting just how this can, how this all merges. But the, what's more interesting, this ban list came out after all the YCSs have been uh, concluded. I think there's only one more as of the time of this recording. And then I don't think we start the YCS season doesn't start back up until like February. So it's very interesting. I guess giving people time to play around with the changes and stuff like that. I don't know. Maybe it's also the, you know, just help the competitive, the uh, local scene. I don't know what you have to the local scene, Konami. You didn't hit any of the good cards. Oh, well. Well, do let me know down in the comments all your angry ranting thoughts if you're a casual player for Mystic Mime being banned. Or all your thoughts on the ban list as a whole and your thoughts on the Shizu tier as the tier zero format uh, deck and all of that. And do make sure to like, subscribe, and ring the bell so you get notified when my videos go live for you. And we'll see you here next time on Mama Dragon's TCG.